how do you define your competitions? You know, speaking that that those are your customers. Like, how does that how does that help you define your competition? Uh, again, it, it does come down to the similar like on the road. Any mm-hmm. business that has those similar services within that one hour radius, right? Yeah, I treat them as competition. I say, hey, look, they're going to be doing something. That doesn't mean I'm necessarily focused on what they're doing, but hey, that customer you're acknowledging you know, it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But the other part of it that doesn't get talked about is the online competition. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and competing for the eyeballs and saying, hey, that new customer or that new car customer that just bought, you know, uh, a Range Rover. Well, they're going to mm-hmm. go and search and I better make sure I pop up. If I don't pop up, you know, then someone else is, is competing for that attention. So, that, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so sometimes your competition is not necessarily other detailers like local, like you're, you're, you're in an online world. Yeah. Just get customers' attention could be competition. Yeah. I think that's, that's something that, wow. you know, doesn't get touched on a lot. So, I, I that's a great <laughs> that's way to look at it, man. I like that. Good customer, you know. I, I'm going to wash their car. I'm going to detail their car. We're going to make sure it's ceramic coated. We're going to do maintenance yeah. washes at their house. We're going to service that customer in every possible way. Um, and at least that's, you know, my sort of broad approach to how we run our business. Hey, you know, you, you brought something up here and it just keyed me up. Um, a, de- a, a, a dealership could it, is could be your competition. Absolutely. You know, at the new car purchase level, mm-hmm. um, they most of them have detail shops. Yeah. And we all know that the typical service that they get there. Okay. So we're not going to hide behind the fact that it's not, I don't even think the dealership would say we're, we're of that level, but they're making those sales. So you are competing for that business. I think a really easy example is there's a Porsche dealership down the street. They mm-hmm. offer free, free car wash. Can't be free. Right. Uh, but do you really want to drive that hundred thousand dollar Porsche through that machine for free? No. Probably not. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> um, so that's where again we Porsche is one of our number one cars. It's right down the street. We get a ton of Porsches that come through. Sure. Um, and again, they're like, man, I could go wash this for free, but I'd rather pay and get the service done right. You know, and maintain my vehicle, and then we, you know, then they're then they're not going anywhere. So your competition, you're you're not necessarily fixating on it. You're not studying what they're doing. You're acknowledging, and when we talk about that competition, I'm talking about like brick and mortar or, you know, mobile guy, whatever, you know, d- your detail competition. Yep. Um, you're not like fixating on what they're doing. You're not studying them. You're you're just acknowledging and, you know, maybe keep an eye on it, but, but really just focusing on yourself. Is that right? Yeah, I kind of do it. Again, I call it a self, self-audit, self right? Where mm-hmm. I'm going to do a competition audit and be like, hey, look, Type in ceramics near me. Okay, hey, look, who's doing stuff right? You know what I mean? What's the market looking like right there? You can go into Google Analytics and really dive into it if you want. Mm-hmm. Um, to see what are those people searching for and making sure that, hey, I'm going to, and this is on the online side, right? And making sure that I'm going to be, you know, at the top there for, for the main categories that I want to be. You know, what's, uh, what, what's unique to us is, so I, the way I define my competition, it's very specific and there's only a uh, couple maybe that even fit into this mold Mm -hmm. but someone that can provide the type of service that we provide Mm -hmm. okay um compete on the customer service level um which pretty much eliminates a lot of them because of the staff that we have we're able to service our customers thoroughly Mm -hmm. um and um so so there's only a few right and and i kind of keep an eye on but you know who i watch more who i consider more competition when i'm trying to improve our shop what is that? I'm I'm looking at other shops my size and statute and say, and usually it's in an online world. Yeah. Okay. And you're on social media and you're like watching the things that they're doing, watching the marketing that they're doing. And you're going, that's my competition. We're not competing for customers. <laughs> no, We're competing. God, that's on, a phenomenal point, Dustin. Yeah. On shop, you know, and that's what drives me. But listen, I don't want to be caught sleeping because there's some guys, there's some detailers in our area that absolutely could quickly if i weren't paying attention at some level they mm-hmm. could quickly you know jump up and go you know make a wave and 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 go and i would have to you know acknowledge them a little bit more again not taking away from anybody in our area there's a market for every detailer around we need more detailers in our area Could however i just don't look to them as direct competition um because the the customers that we service it, the way that we do it kind of you know separates us I think that's probably the best point of the show. I think that's 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 the real right there. That's the, that's going on. Instagram right there. I love yeah. that um, because again, if you're just a, just starting out, you could be in a bubble, 
right? Whatever mm -hmm. little town, small town you are, you versus the other detailer, right? Across the street. And then you guys are yeah. just going back and forth instead of going, hey, best mobile detailer in Los Angeles. Yeah. Right? And, done that. and that's how I, you know, started our mobile shop because I, I didn't care who did it around us. We're in Chicago. No one does mobile detailing. Yeah. Well, Chicago. Um, <laughs> No, I don't want to. And, you know, there's some good guys out there. No, I know what you're saying. And you, and you had to lump everybody up in the same bowl, but you, yeah. sometimes you do that. Dude. But again, you go out and you go, let's say you start searching in Florida and, and you know, Los Angeles and California, and you, you get these ideas of how people are doing it really well outside yeah. of your bubble. And yeah. man, that is a great, great point that I think a lot of people should do to great mm -hmm. and continue well, to expand their business. It does. It makes sense. I mean, that's the reason we go put the, the, the race deck floor and it's the reason that we go do these things in our shop. I mean, yes. It's functional. Yes, it helps us, but we want to look the part. We want to look the part of these professional shops. We want to be on the level of the people that are that are doing great in our industry. We want to be on that level, and so the things that we do help get us there. And that's and that stuff never ends. You know, like that's not a a game that you win and it's over. It's a game that's played every day, and you have to acknowledge it. Now, I do want to preface that by saying I don't think it's your time spent wisely concerning yourself over it a whole lot. Like, no. you know, like as a D as an entrepreneur, you owe your business more to spend 99% of it on it. And then the other 1% on what else is going on around you in a sense, because I promise you looking around ain't going to help you a whole lot there. You know? No, no. And, and I think let's, that's kind of, let's talk, get Billy the yeah. shout out. Right. That competition is you. Yeah. Right. 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 He he said it best there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, you're going to make sure you're you're doing the best that you can for your business. Mm -hmm. Right. And it doesn't necessarily matter what everybody else is doing, because you're going to go through those those blocks and getting better and better each and every week, every month, every year. That's um, right. As long as you're sort of focusing on yourself and your business, you know, but I do think it takes, you know, take a little bit of time, figure out a good strategy that's that's that works for you. Right, that works for your business to be able to go in and know what's out there, whether it's in your immediate area or or online. You know what I found the best competition for us is what the numbers from last year. <laughs> yeah. We compete. We yeah. compete hard against mm -hmm. our numbers from last year. And yes, guys, we're we're way out in left field when we're talking about competition, which you thought we were going to talk about, right? But this is this should be what you focus on. Really is. How are you bettering yourself? And the way you compare that is things that you did in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, we measure ourselves against numbers in the past, and you should have some numbers there that matter to you, such as sales or, or you know, production volume, sales volume, how much you completed and, and got paid for, the number of jobs which can create your average uh, ticket price. Yeah. Um, so the number of jobs divided by or the, the amount of money divided by the number of jobs. Gives you energy. So we compare those things. And now that's a competition. We're competing within ourselves. So that's that kind of drives us too. I don't know. Yeah. And the one the one other point is is like, you know what? Competition, that owner that owns it across the street, I got great relationships with these mm -hmm. guys. You know what I mean? I know them. I reach out to them. I make sure that I've got a really good competition. It's like keep your enemies closer. No. Uh <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it is a thing where like if someone comes to us and they're looking for a different type of service, right? They're looking for a yeah. $19.99 monthly subscription car wash. Man, listen, down the street, they're going to take really good care of you. I know the level of service they provide. Sure. You know, it's not a hand wash. It's a machine, right? Maybe their detail center is a little bit different, you know. Absolutely, um, yeah. They're still on rotaries and we're doing dual action. But if identifying that customer and saying, hey, you know what? Man, today's wash is on us. Try them down the street. They're really good. You know what I mean? Like, and just knowing that and having a great relationship of where to send people that aren't necessarily yeah. your customer. There's so much value in knowing the, the, your, your competition around you. Mm -hmm. um, it, other detailers, when y'all come together, when you come together in a local area and we do that, we, we've worked really hard in our area to do this, um, bringing them together because now you can talk about the things that you do different. Yeah. Now you can talk about the services that you provide and, you know, you can even talk about pricing. You can talk about paying the butt customers that nobody wants to deal with. Like yeah. there is way more power because here's the reality. People don't want to talk to their dis, their, their competition because they're going to know my that? secret sauce. They're going to know my price. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think they don't want to? Oh, oh, this is the re rationalization. Okay, this is how they rationalize it. I don't want them to know my pricing. I don't want them to know everything I offer you. They're, they're just going to steal yeah. that. 
Yeah. Well, how hard is it to pick up the phone and call a detail shop and say, hey, I'm Frank over here and I'm going to get my 2500 detail. Can you give me a price? And that detail is going to rattle that shit off like a, like a singing <laughs> bird. I don't know if that's a saying. No, or not. <laughs> you know, the, the phone calls are hard to sometimes get to the owners, right? Right. If you, yeah, you know, some of these other car washes and businesses and detail shops are either working or they're on a different job or whatnot. Um, so I'm social media, man. I, I'm going to just yeah. make sure I go out and I'm just going to be like, hey, Nick from Splash, own it down the street, would love to connect. Let me get you a cup of coffee. You know, love that. You know we're in the same town. You know, I mean, we're, we're all trying to do a good job here. We'd love to yeah. just connect. We do, we do trainings here at my shop. Um, usually try to put together a couple a year. Uh, we're a little bit behind. We were supposed to already have had, had one this year, but man, we've had so much going on. But that's a great way to bring people in. Is no. and, and then as a detailer, matter of fact, if you're not confident in your service, like if you're not saying, well, I'm not putting on a training, you can reach out to companies like IGL or there's a num numerous other companies that will come do one in-house. Yeah. And, and then you offer, you know, bring in other detailers in your area, bring them in. And then, you know, put on a training with someone else. And, and if there's a charge involved, y'all split it up and pay for it. And I'm telling you, the elevated service now that you as detailers provide, mm -hmm. will the, the market will um, notice that and, and things will start to change for you. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, just making those connections, right? It's kind of, hey, look, this competition thing isn't always such a bad thing. It's no. going to create you. It's going to create great relationships. And I think that relationships part is just something that's really difficult for a lot of people starting out because mm -hmm. you just feel like, oh my God, it's me versus the world, right? I'm fighting for yes. customers. I'm fighting. I'm yep. fighting <laughs> for business there. I'm fighting employees if you have them, man. Mm -hmm. Bills, home yeah. life in a sense. I mean, like all of that is pulling for your time. How yep. do you do that? So, um, you know, my thought here. Here's what people need to realize, and, and you know, we we have big companies telling us things all the time. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the way CVS, Walgreens, and Rite Aid all kind of find the same corner. Yep. Take yep. a look. Take a look at how Lowe's and Home Depot always seem to find each other. They're always right next to each other, right? Okay. They're competition. They sell the two by fours. Each one sells two by four. And how much better customer service are you gonna get on a big, on a big uh, corporation like that from Lowe's to Home Depot, right? Yep. They probably say they're different, but but reality. You buying the two by fours? They got different okay. colors on there. You know, different colors. You know, I like the blue. I'm a I'm a Lowe's. Are, are you Lowe's or Home Depot? Man, I'm a Menards guy. Do you know Menards down no, there? Oh, I don't know. We don't have Menards. No, it's more of a local. I don't think it's that local. It's Wisconsin, Illinois. It's Menards. Okay. So I'm more of an Ace guy if I had to choose local then. Ace. Okay. Yeah. Ace yeah. is right next to us. So yeah. I'm oh, Ace man. Don't cheat on Ace. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, we got to buy a lot of stuff. You know, Menards yeah. has this thing, 11% rebate on everything. And yeah, wow. they're, those are my guys over there. So. <laughs> so, but you know, so seriously, Lowe's, Home Depot, the reason they do that, guys, is they're not going into an, a, an area that they don't think there's a market for business. Mm -hmm. All right. So, as a detailer, like, I'm not trying to go find this desolate island to go detail. <laughs> I'm going to find where the where the customers are. Yeah. And then I'm going to set up shop because I guarantee you there's more cars, more boats, more motorcycles, more campers, more RVs, more 18 wheelers to detail than all of us detailers put together can do. So I'm going to go find where people are paying for details, and that's where I'm setting up shop.